Today we'll talk about function objects or functors. What are functors? Let's look at an example. We have a class x and we define an operator parenthesis for x which will take a string as a parameter and then it will print out a message with this string. In the main function I can create a x foo and then call foo with the string of high. So here foo is actually an instance of x but we can use foo as if it is a function. This is the idea of functors. Functor uh, expands the concept of function by saying anything behave like a function is a function. In this example x is a class but it behaves like a function we call it a function. One thing to note is don't mess up this syntax with the syntax of defining a type conversion function. Say if I want to define the type conversion from x to a string, I'll do it like this. String const and this is a type conversion function. And type conversion function you put the type after operator and for defining a functor you have to put the type before the operator. Now back to the topic of the functor. What's the benefit of defining a functor? Why don't we just use a regular function? Here are the benefits. You can think of functor as a smart function that can do more things than regular function. If you look at x, the operator parenthesis is a regular function. But x can provide more things beyond operator parenthesis. For example, x can define its own member data to remember the state of the functor. And because of those member data, you could have two different instances of the same functor that behaves different from each other. Secondly, a functor can have its own type. Regular functions can only be differentiated by their function signatures. If two functions have the same function signatures, they are the same function. However, two functors can be of different type even if they have the exact same function signature. Functor also introduces the concept of parameterized function. For the example of class x, if I define a constructor of x that takes an integer parameter, then in the main function I can do x8 high. So this looks like a function that is parameterized with 8 and then invoked with a regular parameter of high. Now the question is, why do we want something like this? Why don't we create a function that takes two parameters, one is an integer and another one is a string? Let's look at an example. We have a function add 2 that takes an integer parameter and what it does is add 2 to that integer and print it out. And in the main function I create a vector of 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I call the algorithm function of for each. Function add 2 will be invoked with each element of vec. So the printout is 4, 5, 6, 7. Now this is not a pretty looking code because we are hard coding a number into a function name. This is not extendable. So how can we make the code more flexible? One obvious solution is we could define a global variable called val equal to 2 and then add 2 will add val instead. So by changing the value of val we can add any number for this function. However, using global variables is another nasty coding practice and we don't want to go there. Then what other solution do we have? We must be able to do better than this. One solution is we could use template. So we define a template of addVal, which still take an integer, but the 
val is defined a parameter for the template. And then in the main function, I can do it with the template. Now it's more flexible. I can change this value to any value that I like. However, there is still a problem. A temporary variable is resolved at compile time, so it has to be a compile time constant. So if I have uh, integer x equal to 2, I cannot use x for add val. This won't compile. Then what other solution do we have? The best solution is using functor. Here I define a functor of add value and val is a private data member of add value. And I create a constructor of add value which will initialize val with j. Now in the main function I can do it like this. We call the add value parenthesis x so this is the most flexible solution it uses a parameterized function or a functor another good thing is we don't have to write every functor by ourselves stl already provides some built-in functors here are the lists less greater, greater equal, less equal, not equal to, logical and, logical not, logical all, multiplies, minus, plus, divide, modulus, negate. And here are some examples of using them. x equal to multiplies int 3, 4. This is exactly the same as x equal to 3 multiplied by 4. And if not equal to int x 10, is same as if x not equal to 10. So these built-in functors are convenient functors for the algorithm functions that we could use like the previous example. Parameter binding. Say we have a set of integer which has 2, 3, 4, 5 and we want multiply each element by 10 and save the result into a vector of integer vec. We know there's a functor multiplies that we can use, and we know there's an algorithm transform, which can call the multiplies on every item of my set, and then back insert the result into vec. That is exactly what we want. But we have a problem. The functor multiplies takes two parameter. However, transform needs a functor that takes only one parameter then what can we do? We can use the bind function. With the bind function, the placeholder comma comma underscore one means the first parameter of multiplies will be substituted with an element from my set. And the second parameter is 10. So the result is vec contains 20 30, 40, 50. With the bind function, we have another solution for the add to problem that we talked about in the beginning. We can do it like this. We change the function add val to take two parameters, i and val, and then use bind function to bind the add val function with a second parameter of 2 or any other number that you want to use. One last thing to note is this bind function is only available in C++11. If you are using the old C++, you can use the equivalent function of bind first and bind second. You can also convert a regular function into a functor. Here I have a regular function of pow which raises x to the power of y. And in the main function, I have a set of integer my set. And I want to raise every element of my set 
to the power of 2 and save that into the deck of integer d. To do that, I'll use the template class function to convert the regular function pow into a functor f. And then again, I use the transform algorithm and the bind function to raise every item of my set to the power of 2 and then back insert into D. So this is how it is done. One note is the function class template is only in C++11. For the old C++ you have to use pointer fun. With the built-in functors and the bind function I can do something fancy. Say I want to copy everything from my set that satisfies this condition to a deck of integer d. And again, I want to use the transform function. Now the problem is there is no built-in functors that do this kind of check. And I don't want to create another function that specifically for this purpose. Then one way I can do it is I can construct a functor from the built-in functors. And this is how I do it. I use the bind function and I use the built-in functors of logic or greater and less. And this will do the thing that I want. How do you like it? You probably don't like it because this code is not very readable. It will probably take a while for you to figure out what this monster is doing. So for problem like this, it is probably better for you to create another function. For example, we create a neat copy that takes an integer and returns a boolean saying whether the, the integer need to be copied or not. And then in the transform function, I can use the need copy function. It is much clearer this way. Or better yet, if you are using C++11, you could use lambda function. This is how I use a lambda function that provide the same kind of data check. So with lambda function, I don't have to create a separate function in a different place. Everything is in one place and the code is still very readable. Lambda function works very well with the uh, algorithms. Functor has an important role in STL. Remember we said associative containers are always sorted. But what criteria do they use for sorting? Say we have a set of int my set that has five integers and uh, it is automatically sorted in ascending order. The template class set actually can take two template parameters. One is the type of its element and the second one is a comparison functor that's used for sorting. And the default value for that comparison functor is less. So set int is equivalent to set int less int. Now, suppose I want to create a set that's sorted in a different order. I want to sort them according to the least significant digit. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. So I'll use LSB less instead of less. Then I need to define LSB less. Suppose I defined it like this. LSB less takes two integers and it will return true when the least significant digit of x is less than y's. How does this code look? This code will not compile because set requires a function type as its second parameter, not just a function or function pointer, and LSB, LSB less is a function. So we need to define a functor and this functor does the same check. And we need to change the LSB into LSB. Now this code will work. 
So now you see the importance of functor in STL. Without functor, the associative container won't work. There is a special kind of function or functor called predicate. A predicate must satisfy two conditions. One, it returns a boolean or something convertible to boolean. Two, it does not modify data. And here is an example of predicate. It returns a bool and it is passing the parameter by value so there's no way it can modify the original data. And the transform function is using the predicate to decide whether the data needs to be copied or not. Predicate is widely used in STL algorithms. It's mainly used for comparison or condition check. One thing you have to keep in mind is you can't assume a predicate is invoked only once per element during the execution of the algorithm. So it is recommended that a predicate is a pure function, which means the return value is purely based on the input value and has nothing to do with how many times the predicate has been invoked. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel so when I post a new video, you will be updated. Or you can go to my channel's homepage and see what I'm offering today. Bye bye.